and I work for Holly North Production Supplies, and we supply the television, theatrical, and various entertainment industries with special effects and supplies, and one of those supplies would be flame retardants and treatments for fire safety. Uh, today we're going to look at a field flame test, which is a method that can be used to evaluate goods um, in the field. So if at the last minute you don't know whether your goods are flame retarded or not, you can use this test to, to determine if it's going to be sufficiently safe for use. Uh, if a good has already been treated or if it's inherently flame retarded, odds are that we'll have a certificate that will show um, what it's been treated with and when it was treated. It will also state whether it's a water-soluble one and whether it requires retreatment after dry cleaning or, or exposure to water. A fire safety test should be performed by the authority having jurisdiction, an AHJ, which would be your fire marshal. If you don't have a fire marshal that's going to report on, on your goods and you need to ascertain for yourself if, if the goods are, are flame retarded, you can do this field flame test, but it's not going to provide foolproof um, results and so it's not advisable to depend upon this. It's more a last resort if you don't have sufficient data. When you're doing a field flame test, ideally you could do it outside or in a garage, someplace where there's not a great deal of wind because you want a nice um, uh, undisturbed flame so that it's not blowing all over. I put black wrap down, but make sure that you're working on a non-flammable surface and also there's a potential for uh, burning material to drip so you don't want some molten material hitting your surface. It could be dangerous. And you can just use simple things like a coat hanger and a office clip or a pony clip. I'm using a piece of a broken hanger here that will hold the clip and you just want to make sure that you're, you're not exposing yourself to flame. Um, if it does catch fire you could have a bit of a flame and you don't want to get burnt and you want to be able to hold it there for 12 seconds. Also make sure you've got a, a source of water immediately beside you so that you can extinguish it right away if it takes flame. We have a fire extinguisher at hand as well just to be doubly sure. Always make sure there's no combustibles in the area. We're going to test this sample of burlap, which is often used in creating sort of a rustic effect on a location. And uh, this is an untreated piece of burlap. Ideally, you'll hold it in the flame for 12 seconds, but in this case, I have a feeling we'll move it a little quicker than that. That's a fail. That's a pass. I removed this one before 12 seconds because it was clear that it was taking flame and it wouldn't be safe to hold it out any longer. And the charring was beyond four inches, so this would fail a flame test. So we did 12 seconds. There's charring, most definitely, but it did not ignite and the charring didn't go beyond four inches. And as soon as we removed it from the flame, it extinguished. So that shows it's not propagating flame and this would be a pass. We recommend that uh, a theater or a company that has soft goods for display uh, maintain a log of all their goods and a record of whether they're flame retarded or inherently flame retarded. And that each year they should perform a test on the materials to make sure that the, the treatment is still valid. Nowadays, the manufacturers are moving more towards inherent flame retarded materials so that the treatment won't be required and that that's going to help a lot and I think also awareness and availability of, of training videos and, and resources through the internet is making it easier for people to comply.